Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jason. Thanks for watching. Today we're going to be jumping in and talking about this brand new solar panel. This guy is the ATEM Power 200 watt folding solar panel. What's really cool about this is it has a built in MPPT solar charge controller right on the back, so you don't need any other charge controllers. You just basically connect this up to your battery, put it in the sun, and you're good to go. Now, this is perfect for anybody that has an RV that wants to do boondocking and charge up via solar perfect for anybody that's going over landing or car camping they just want to hook this right up to their car battery or an external battery and you're good to go now this is not really designed for power stations you can use it with power stations i'll show you how to do that a little bit later in the video now as for price this is really competitive there's a couple renergy options out there that cost the same as this those are 100 watt options this is a 200 watt option so pretty excited to show you guys how this solar panel works all the features on it and then we'll take it out and do some live testing hopefully you guys are excited let's just jump right into the details on the solar panel so let's go ahead and talk about some of the features on the outside of the solar panel that make it great for portability then we'll go ahead and open it up and show you guys the charge controller on the back and how that works now the first thing you may notice is this actually doesn't have tempered glass panels. This is a plastic backer board with a PET coating. These are monocrystalline panels, so you save a ton of weight by not having that tempered glass. The next feature that allows you to save a lot of weight on this panel is the actual frame for the entire panel itself. They're a little bit lower profile, a little bit thinner. They're still made of aluminum and plenty durable, but you save that extra weight. Now to make it easy to carry around, you can see there's a handle on top. So you just grab by the handle and carry it around. There's also two metal latches that hold each side together. They're very easy to unlatch and latch back together. Now, if you've ever had to carry around a glass rigid panel, you know the corners are super sharp. And so they had that in mind with this portable panel. They put plastic covers on each corner so you don't have to worry about cutting your hands or damaging anything around the panel whenever it's being stored. Now the dimensions of the solar panel folded up are as follows. Now the panel is about 36 inches tall. It's a little under 26 and a half inches wide. And it's a little under two and a quarter inches thick. Now right when I pulled it out of the box, it came inside this protective case. So this protective case is not a hardcover case, so it's basically just there to protect against basic debris, scratches, dirt, things like that. So let's go ahead and take it out. Let's see if this is easy or hard to get out of the case. Um, some of the protective cases are kind of a pain. So let's see if this one's too bad or not. Okay. Okay, so not too hard to get out of the case. I'm guessing putting it back in is gonna be kind of a chore. Um, let's go ahead and try that just to see how it works. Okay, not too bad to put it back in the case. I was actually surprised. Now let's go ahead and open up the solar panel so you guys can see what it looks like on the back. So you can see there are 200 watt halves. Now taking a closer look, you have a junction box over there with the wire that comes out into this junction box. And then this junction box basically with both power connections comes into the solar charge controller. So you have your solar panel in positive and negative, and then you have your battery out positive and negative, And that's what this cable is. I really like that it comes with this long extension cable and has these metal clips that kind of allow you to coil it up and keep it out of the way. Super awesome design. And then you have this Anderson 50 amp connector. Now this comes with an adapter that has alligator clips so you can connect it right up to your battery. Now another really cool thing is that it has two of these kickstands. They're aluminum, they have these stoppers, and these allow you to have a really good angle in the middle of the summer to get a lot of power. Now these are a little bit short for fall, or winter use and I'll talk about that a little bit later when we're testing this outside. Now looking down the middle you have two hinges. They're metal, they're durable, there's no play in them. I haven't noticed any issues and I think they'll last a long time. Now here's a brief overview of the specifications on the solar panel. A couple important ones. Open circuit voltage is going to be 22.5. The maximum power voltage is going to be 18.4 volts. That's when it gets the maximum power and maximum power current is 10.87 amps. Now that's basically all the specifications and features of the solar panel. Let's go ahead and take this outside, do some real world solar testing, see the performance we get on a late fall day. Okay guys, we're outside. Let's go ahead and do some testing on the solar panel. Now I want to test this in three different ways. I want to test it flat on the ground. I want to test it using the kickstands and then I want to prop it up because it's late in the fall. We're going to get most power as this is standing up more towards the sun. Now the solar conditions are really nice today. It's around 55 degrees, just a few clouds. There is a bit of wind. So I apologize for the wind noise in advance. I'll try to edit it out as much as possible. 
So for most of the solar testing today, we're going to be using this 12 volt, 35 amp hour sealed lead acid battery. Now I will briefly test it on my 12 volt lithium iron phosphate battery. It should work just fine. Most of the lithium iron phosphates are drop in replacements for lead acid. But because this is mostly designed for lead acid, let's go ahead and see what we're getting on this battery. So using the stock kickstands, we're getting 135 watts in on the panel, 10 amps, and the battery's sitting around 13.5 volts. Okay, so now I have the panel laying flat on the ground, just in case you were gonna set this out on top of your RV just temporarily, or put it on top of a truck cab and didn't wanna deal with the kickstands. Let's see what power we're getting with it flat on the ground. So with it flat on the ground, we're getting 76 watts input. It's 5.78 amps, and the battery's sitting around 13.23 volts. Okay guys, now I have the solar panel propped up. I have a piece of wood underneath so the grass doesn't get in the way. And I have it sitting on these containers. Just remember in the fall, the sun is so much lower in the sky, so you have to prop this up. Let me go ahead and show you a quick little trick. Now this is called the can trick. Anytime you want to line up a solar panel, you just go ahead and put a can on it and you're looking for a shadow and you adjust it until the shadow goes away. So right here you can see we have minimum shadow. So we should get the most amount of power in the conditions today. Okay, update on solar conditions. Got some more high clouds coming in. Now we have a pretty big storm coming in, so this is gonna be my, my only solar day to test for at least a week. So uh, we'll just see what we get. Just gonna see a little bit less power with these high clouds versus earlier in the video. And just as I figured, 133 watts, 36, 42. Okay, little, little peaks of sun coming through. Okay guys, with those clouds setting in, we're only getting 131 watts. What's nice is we did see a peak of 157. So I did see this put out a little bit more power in between these clouds. Um, right there down at the bottom left, you'll see 157 watts peak. So uh, definitely not getting the best results with these clouds, but at least I did see some good output, 157 watts. Okay, so just a few things before we end the solar testing part of the video. Now you'll note that it's up high like this just because it's in the fall. In the summer with the standard kickstands, those kickstands right there, it should be perfectly fine because the sun is so much higher in the sky. But with it being fall, you have to have it propped up a lot more. So no need for this weird setup if you're going to be using this in the summer. Now also, these are kind of real world solar results. We have some high clouds today. We have some thicker clouds also that rolled in later in the video. So that's the results that you'd see if you didn't have perfect conditions. Now I try to always get really good conditions for solar testing, but it's really hard late in the fall. Okay guys, we're back in from the solar testing results. What did you guys think of those tests? Now we saw max input very briefly of 157 watts and we averaged around 130 to 140 watts. You know, the conditions could have been better, but I don't think this would ever reach rated output 200 watts. I think the max amount of power I'd ever see from this would be around 170 to 175 watts. Now I wanna briefly compare a uh, light hybrid panel like this. I'm gonna call this a hybrid panel because it's got a rigid frame, but it's a portable panel. So I'm gonna call this a hybrid panel versus an actual glass rigid panel. Now this comes in at 15 pounds. This Bouge RV 180 watt panel comes in at 25 pounds. So there's quite a bit of a difference of weight, you know, carrying this around, moving this, storing this away because it takes up less space is gonna be a lot more useful for a portable solution than carrying, you know, a large rigid panel around. Now you have to ask yourself, how are you going to be using this panel? How often are you gonna be using it? And what weather conditions is it gonna be in? Because a portable panel like this with PET, it's durable, but it's not designed to be in the sun every single day, year round. The PET will eventually break down. So if you're gonna be using this for a RV boondocking situation, you know, camping, temporary use, if you're gonna be using it during emergencies or just during power outages, this will work really well. But if you're going to have it outdoors every single day in all the weather conditions, you might want to look for a glass rigid panel that will last 25 years. It'll stand up to all weather conditions. It's not going to have any issues. The problem is that those panels are just not very portable. Now, I briefly want to describe how you can bypass this charge controller if you want to use this solar panel for a power station or if you want to use a different charge controller. So there are four screws one at each corner that are attached to these metal brackets. You undo those four screws and this whole thing will pop off. The next thing you'd wanna do is unscrew these four wires. Now these are the output for the solar panel and these are what goes out to the extension wire that would connect to your battery. What you could do is solder red to red, black to black, and then you're basically extending out this uh, solar output and that will connect right into your power station or your separate charge controller. Okay guys, we're getting to the end of the video here. Let's just jump right into the pros and cons about this product so you guys feel educated enough to make a decision if this product is right for you. Now we'll start with the pros and then we'll end with the cons. 
So now some of the pros on this solar panel are just how lightweight it is for being a hybrid rigid panel. It's actually pretty lightweight. It has a very thin profile, so it takes up less space. It has the nice latches and handle, so it's very portable. I actually think it's a pro to have the charge controller built in on the back, so it's just a plug and play setup, and you don't have to worry about any issues. Just hook it right up to your battery and you're good to go. Now another pro for this solar panel would be the built-in kickstands. It's always nice to have the kickstands because you can get that extra bit of efficiency depending on the angle of the sun. You guys saw from the solar testing when the panel is flat on the ground, you definitely don't get as much power input. So the built-in kickstands is always nice on any solar panel. Now about some of the cons, let's go ahead and just bring those up. One of the cons that I think is pretty important is the PET coating. Now PET is pretty durable, but it's not meant to be out in the sun all day, every day. It will fade and crack as it sits in the sun over a long period of time. Now it would have been nice to have ETFE on it because that is kind of the newer technology that lasts a little bit longer. The other thing that might be an issue I've noticed is the backer board is just has a little bit of play in it. If you put it into that case, the protective case, because it's not a hard protective case, if something was to fall on it, or if something kind of rolled into it in your cargo area, you might end up with a big crack in this because this is kind of a plastic back and damage the cells. So those are kind of two of the cons that I could think of. Overall, the price is right. Um, you are getting a budget MPPT solar charge controller. It's definitely better than a PWM charge controller, so you do have a little bit better efficiency there. Overall, I don't have any other issues with it. Now, you may want to ask yourself when or how are you going to be using a solar panel like this? I definitely recommend a different product if you're going to be using a solar panel every single day. This product is definitely recommended for people that are using it temporarily, uh, you know, boondocking with an RV, setting it out, charging up your house battery with your RV. Um, you know, you're going overlanding, you're setting up camp, you set this out, charge up your battery so you don't have to run your engine on your overland rig. This would be a great option for that. Just charge up your AGM batteries just, you know, while you're sitting there. Uh, car camping, this would work great for that, especially if you had an external battery and, uh, you know, lithium iron phosphate, just plugged it right in, it would charge it up. So there's definitely options that work really well for this. It doesn't take up quite as much space as a glass rigid panel, but it's also less durable. So hopefully you guys found this information helpful. Now in the owner's manual, it does talk about how this product has a 12 month warranty. If you guys wanna learn more about that, I'll include all the links down in the video description. Now, if you guys have any questions about this product, go ahead and throw a comment down below. Also, what did you guys think of this? Now, this is the first hybrid panel that I've seen on the market. Is this something that you guys like to see? Is this something that you guys find interesting? How would you guys use a panel like this? Now, answer those questions down in your comments. Let me know what you guys think. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video.